Hey, a friend, Chris here from My Logic Pro Rules. You know, I don't think it's a secret to anyone that Logic Pro comes with a ton of stuff, right? I mean, there's sound packs, Apple loops, demo projects, patches, and occasionally I like to spend time digging through the additional content because when you start to poke around, you start to come across interesting ideas, sounds, and techniques you can take with you for your own music. So I feel like a lot of Logic users maybe open the demo projects once and then never again. But these aren't just random songs. They exist to showcase what Logic Pro can do. So I love the additional content. And right now I want to show you three mixing techniques that I've picked up from the demo projects in Logic Pro. Let's dig into it. First up is drum processing. Now this actually isn't specific to any Logic Pro demo project. However, I have loaded one of the many different lesson projects that come with Logic Pro for iPad. I just popped open the project on the iPad, saved it to my iCloud account, and then opened it on my Mac. If you own an iPad, it's really a great feature of that version of Logic Pro that helps you get up and running by following guided lessons. In this case, I want to show you something I picked up from the Drum Kit Designer multi-track patches. So I'm going to open the library, and under Drum Kit, under Multi-Channel Kits, I'm going to select the exact same kit. In this case, it's SoCal. So I'll select the SoCal Plus kit. All right, so now Drum Kit Designer has changed from a single track to a track stack that includes many different subtracks. Take a quick listen to what these drums sound like. That sounds really good, right? Now, if I expand the track stack for the SoCal kit, obviously there are plenty of tracks. There's tracks for the overheads, the kick, the snare, hi-hat, toms. But what I found very interesting in the track stack, if we scroll down, is that there are four parallel channel strips for sub, attack, crunch, pump. Now, what exactly are these? Well, they're parallel auxiliary channel strips. If I open the mixer, you can see that the individual toms, as well as the snare and kick bus, have plenty of different bus assignments to them. And if I hold shift and click on each assignment, by clicking on bus four, we have a reverb parallel effect. Bus seven is that sub channel strip. Bus five is another reverb. Bus six is a reverb. So there's quite a bit going on, but you can see right now that I've highlighted the attack channel strip. That's bus eight. Bus nine is crunch and bus 10 is pump. Okay, so there's a lot going on, I recognize that, but let's just hone in on these four channel strips here. In a nutshell, the folks at Apple, when they mix these multi-channel drum kits for you to use, they included parallel effects to enhance the sound of the drum kits. So let's start with sub here. Sub has an instance of fat effects, and essentially the point of this channel strip is the bass enhancement. To enhance 80 hertz for the kick, adding low end for the instrument, so there's this nice sturdy low end foundation that helps give them their power. If we solo the sub, after that is the parallel attack channel strip using Logic Pro's Enveloper. Admittedly, Enveloper is a little long in the tooth visually. It's due for an update, but still a really powerful audio effect. In this case, this parallel attack channel strip is adding some punch to the drum hits. It's accentuating the attack element, the very beginning of each hit. If we hear that in solo. Next up, we have the crunch channel strip. This has an instance of distortion. In this case, it's kind of like a parallel compressor. I mean, it's adding a distorted version of the drums. But they don't sound aggressively distorted, right? Which adds a bit of solidity and fatness to the drums. And then, of course, is the pump channel strip, which has an instance of compressor set to the vintage FET. And this would be your classic parallel compression. And of course, you could always use sends on faders to identify which of the drum elements are being sent to these individual auxes. We can see they're highlighted in yellow, right? Now, let's take a listen to the drums. And as we listen, I will mute and unmute the sub, the attack, the crunch, and pump.
Just take a listen to that. There's more thump to the kick thanks to the parallel sub-channel strip. The drums feel more assertive because of the attack, the crunch, and the pump channel strip. Just everything sounds more exciting and also filled in. So I actually went through under settings and saved each of these channel strips as my own user channel strip. Attack, crunch, pump, and sub. And now that's part of my workflow when mixing drums. The beauty here is, is that you can accentuate different elements of the drum kit without overprocessing the individual elements. And these parallel effects can be applied across the board, whether you're using software drums or recording real drums or for another instrument entirely, right? It doesn't have to just be drums. The next technique I want to show you that I picked up is the use of the scanner vibrato audio effect to add vibe and creativity to your tracks. Now, full disclosure, I never really used the scanner vibrato plugin in Logic Pro until this Ellie Dixon demo project. Visually, the scanner vibrato seems to be in the same family is the vintage organ software instrument and the rotocab audio effect. And obviously it provides you with a vibrato or chorus type of sound. And there are various controls for adjusting the stereo phase, the rate, and depth. And Ellie Dixon has made liberal use of this effect in her song Swing. When digging around this project, the thing that caught my ear and made me go, hey, maybe I do want to use that audio effect, is the use of the skin of vibrato on the guitars. So let's take a listen from the pre-chorus of this Ellie Dixon song. How cool is that? I love how kind of warbly and kind of spooky it is, even though the song is clearly a pop sensibility about it. I wouldn't think of it as spooky. But the scanner vibrato adds a really cool element to these guitars. If I bypass this effect. That's a cool part still, but adding the scanner vibrato back in. It adds a vibe to the guitars. It makes them that much cooler. And again, this is an effect that looks like it's for an organ, and yet it's being applied to a guitar. Similarly, there's another guitar track here, Guitar Double, that employs the same exact effect. Right, and even the bass guitar has this effect. Take a listen. I gotta be honest, I never would have added that to a bass guitar, but now this effect is very much on my radar and I'm thinking about it all the time as I work on projects. Okay, this last one is something a lot of home studios struggle with. How do I get that air and presence in my mix? How do I make it sound more open and polished? Well, Apple has an answer for you, and it's hiding in these live loop demo grids. If we pop open the inspector and take a look at the stereo output, I want to bring your attention to the exciter. The exciter is living on the stereo output amongst some other plugins so that it can process every track in the project, the entire production at the same time. What the exciter is doing is adding subtle harmonics at 10,000 hertz and above, so the very top end of the frequency spectrum. Or to put another way, it's subtly enhancing the top end. Now, it's subtle, but that subtlety is the point. This is that final 2% of polish that makes something sound finished. So let's check it out. I popped open the Solaris Live Loop grid that comes with Logic Pro. It is hands down one of my favorites. It is so awesome. Let's take a quick listen to just some of the scenes here in the Live Loops grid. It rules, right? It sounds so good. All right, let's now check out the exciter. The exciter's frequency is set to 10,000 hertz, so it's affecting essentially 10,000 hertz and above. The dry signal is on, so we're hearing the entire project with the addition of these harmonics, which is 18%. Let me begin playback. I'll bypass the exciter as we listen and bring it back so we can hear the difference of it on and off.
do you hear how the entire production, still awesome, still amazing, kind of loses something in the top end? If we turn off the dry signal, we'll hear just the harmonics that are being added. One thing to point out is the exciter is something easy to overdo because once you start to enhance upper harmonics, it's very enticing to the ear. It makes you go, man, I want more of that. So it's best to be cautious with this effect. Small adjustments can go a long way. And there's plenty more across the demo projects. I really like the use of the Big Crusher as a hard clipper in the Hardwell Live Loop Grid. So right there are three mixing techniques that you can take with you for your music from Logic Pro's additional content. Drum parallel processing, the scan of vibrato for vibe, and the exciter on the stereo output. That's why I love the additional content, the live loop grids, the demo projects, the patches, the sounds. There's so much great stuff just hiding in plain sight that most users overlook because they don't take the time to explore. And that's why I do take the time to explore because Apple has clearly put a lot of time and energy into demonstrating why Logic Pro rules. So I hope today's video was helpful for you. And please let me know in the comments below what's something that you've taken from a demo project, a patch, just something in Logic Pro that comes with it. What's something you took with you that improved and helped your craft? Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.